Today on Echo Voices, we have Amanda Mason from Smartbox, and she's going to tell us all about Grid and Smartbox devices. And the handouts are available at this link down here, which I will also make sure to get in the chat for you. And Amanda, take it away. All right. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Um, so let's see. I'll get my, my screen shared now. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's get into presenting mode. So um, oh, hopefully you guys can see that. Sorry. Always just one little technology <laughs> problem with every presentation. Uh, we forgot to say the technology prayer. Technology exactly. I know. I know. Amen. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> thank, thank you. There we go. All right. We're good now. Um, so, yes. So, I'm Amanda. Um, I work at Smartbox, as Shonda said. Um, and I really, I'm excited to be here. I was at the... Um, yeah, the Baker City, the project they did last, oh gosh, was it last month already? <laughs> the conference we did, and yeah. it was great. Um, and so I work, I'm a speech language pathologist. I got my C's and everything. I'm also an ATP. I got my start um, out of grad school. I did like skilled nursing and I did a bunch of different areas I worked in. And then I ended up working at the ALS Association as their assistive technology services coordinator for about uh, almost six years, I think, before I got into this job. Um, and so now I'm a product specialist with Smartbox and I love all things technology, assistive technology. Um, it's been super fun. There's always more to learn. So as Chandra said, I'm happy to answer questions. Please jump in. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat, but also, if anyone notices a question that I seem to have missed in the chat, jump into, um, but unmute yourselves. Um, and if I don't know an answer, we'll figure it out together or I'll, we'll get back to you. <laughs> um, so let's see here. So Smartbox. Um, Amanda, is, uh, pardon oh, me for interrupting, but you may yeah. want to change your display settings. Oh, is it? Because we're weird. seeing your presenter. Um, oh, thank you. I appreciate it try to have split screens and you know there we go <laughs> is that better is that the whole thing you got it <laughs> there we all go. right there we go <laughs> thank you so um at smartbox uh we make our own software hardware and then one of our own eye gaze cameras um and i see i saw several familiar names on this call so i know a lot of you know this, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page because I know there's, like I was saying, there's always more to learn with assistive tech and everything. So um, again, make our own software, our own speech generating devices, we need hardware, and then the eye gaze camera. Um, the company started about 20 years ago in the UK. So even though it probably feels really new in the US to a lot of people still, some people, um, a lot of people probably still haven't heard of us. Um, it's an older company and we're pretty international, but we recently in the past about two years, pretty much when I started this job, started bringing Smartbox kind of back into the U.S. We were here a little bit before. We didn't have a great plan of action to bring it to people, to bring it to those who need it. Um, another note is that we re recently also purchased Talk to Me Technologies, which is another speech generating device company. Um, I feel like they maybe have been more well known on here in the Pacific Northwest and California and things like that. They're awesome. And it wasn't like a hostile takeover or anything. We bought them really to join teams and make all of our stuff better. Um, for So from our funding process, because they had more staff on like a funding team and the funding side of things. So now we have, we've incorporated that into, um, into our whole new big company together. So that's improving. They were always using our grid three software. Um, and so now we're combining our software and hardware lines. So we're really kind of just making everything better for everyone is the goal. Um, yeah. um, so when we talk about Assistive technology, of course, what we're thinking about, what I know you all are thinking about is getting people independence, interaction, and participation, right? We want them to be able to do everything that everyone can do. Um, and what, oops, I don't know if that work. 
works. There you go. Um, and so how we talk about that with the company that I work for, where we tend to be a higher tech company um, with the speech sharing devices and things that we make that I'll go into in a minute. But we talk a lot about access methods. And again, to make sure we're on the same page, what we talk about, what we mean when we talk about accessibility access methods is how we can make it allow someone to do um, whatever they want or need to do in a similar time and with a similar amount of effort as someone who does not have a disability. So kind of just evening the playing field a little bit. Um, so access method is the way that they can control a high tech device, a computer, or enable them to communicate, right? The way we think about that is looking at different things like pointers or joysticks, you know, we can use rollerballs, head mouse, head mice, um, the smile mouse. And if you guys have had a chance to play with that, these are a lot of companies and access methods that we work with and pair with our devices. Um, that I won't go super into detail with today, but to know that they're out there and that we can bring them together with our software and our hardware. We also, of course, use a lot of switches in our work, um, you know, from regular kind of jelly bean switches that probably most of us have seen. There's muscle switches, EMG switches, brain fingers, so cool little EMG like brain finger switches, all that kind of fun stuff. There's a whole world of switches that I spend a lot of time learning about at the ALS Association. Um, eye gaze, of course, is another um, way we allow for access method. Um, like I mentioned, we make one of our own eye gaze cameras, but our devices that are eye gaze compatible are compatible with many different eye gaze cameras in the market. So you can start to pair what really works for your end user with um, which software and hardware works the best for them as well. And then, of course, things like touch, we work with styluses and key guards and all that kind of stuff as well. So our software that I kind of started mentioning a bit um, is Grid3. And I'm going to do a whole tour of it. But what I kind of want to make sure you get as an overview is that we've got grid sets. Grid3 is a whole, it's a platform. So we've got what we call grid sets that address all of these different things. We call them the seven areas. We have text communication, symbol communication, computer control, environment control, accessible apps, interactive learning, and education options, um, all within our different grid sets. Um, this is a little peek at what our grid explorer looks like. So when you open up grid three, this is kind of um, our homepage as clinicians. And grid three is our assistive technology software for Windows. So you can put on any Windows device. Um, I'll jump in. Um, I'll show you guys later how to, you can get, you access your evaluators licenses um, for free, of course. Um, and you can put it on your laptop, any Windows laptop you might have, or any devices you have, like maybe in your, your clinic or things like that too. It's compatible with all access methods, everything I was just touching on. It's got integrated environmental control, and of course, the ability of like phone, to use phone and email and social media, and all the kinds of communication we want to talk about when we're talking about assistive technology. Um, and this is just a bigger shot of what we call Grid Explorer. Like I said, I'll give us a good tour of this in a little bit. But to give you kind of background info, this is where we as clinicians really work. And each of these squares that you see on the screen is what is referring to as a grid set. And so most users will you have one of the grid sets be their main page. So when they open grid, it will open right into their grid set, their page. This is a place for us to work and kind of figure out how to make um, grid really work well for the person that's using it. Um, we also have grid for iPad. Um, it's worth distinguishing the, between the two. Um, so grid three for Windows, grid for iPad, of course, for iPads. Um, they're pretty much the same, but there are some things that just with the nature of how Apple's and Apple and Windows works um, that iOS, the iPad version can't do um, or that you can do from grid three that you can't do on the iPad. And then our access for grid for iPad is touch and switch only if so we don't have eye gaze access for our iPads yet. We're working on it, but not yet. And this is just a little slide of some of the differences that you might notice between grid for iPad and grid three as you're considering um, feature matching. I think I filled out that um, wonderful matrix you guys are working on. <laughs> I try, I would try to make it very comprehensive as 
the matrix itself is. So if we can find that, but just to kind of line them up, um, you can see that some of the accessible apps aren't available for use in Grid for iPad because um, they want you to use the Apple version of things. No eye gaze access and no environmental control built into Grid for iPad. Of course, with the iPad, there's ways you can kind of start to build those things in, but just with their software alone. Um, it is nice though, our two softwares work seamlessly together. So you can remote edit um, Grid 3, if you can of course remote edit other Windows devices, but you can also remote edit Grid for iPad from Grid 3. So if you've got it on your laptop or something, you can hop onto someone else's iOS version. Um, and then also thinking about you know end users, if you've got someone who, maybe has like a motor neuron disease or a progressive disease. Um, this is where I think about a lot from my LS days and who wants to start on a tablet, start with an iPad using grid for iPad, but then later needs to upgrade to a different kind of access method like iGaze and needs a Windows device. You can just seamlessly put their user profile onto their new device, their new software, not have to go through and make all their customizations and edits again um, as well. So how do you guys get grid? We offer free eval licenses for all clinicians. Um, you can email me, I'll share my email at the end. Um, I know Shonda and Deb have it too, so feel free to reach out. Um, there also is a free 60 day trial of grid three on our website for download. So if you've got someone who just wants to kind of try it out or play around with it a little bit, go for that. And then there's a free 30 day trial of grid for iPad in the app store um, that you can check out too. So software, and now moving into the devices that we offer. Um, I'll say these are our uh, immediately current devices, but with our wonderful merging with Talk To Me Technologies, um, a lot of things are gonna be changing in the next couple of months, which is really exciting. They'll be the same basic lines of devices, but there will be some upgrades to them that are worth keeping your eyes out for. Um, so we make um, the touchpad, which is our Windows tablet device. And this is um, a Surface Go tablet that we, you know, we buy and then we make into a speech generating device that is fundable through insurance or whatever payment method people want to use to purchase it. Put the tough case on it. It's got the optional hard handle you can see on the back, the little kickstand, Bluetooth speaker, it's mountable, all that kind of good stuff. And it runs grid three because it's the Windows device. Um, you also can add a carrying strap if you want. There's some tabs on the bottom for that. Then we've got our talk pad devices, which it took me a good six months to remember to say talk pad or touch pad when <laughs> discussing these. The talk pad devices are the iOS devices. So iPads, we've got the talk pad eight, so an iPad eight, and then the talk pad 10, so the iPad 10 inch. Same idea, we gave them a tough case. Um, the talk pad 10 is mountable, optional hard handle, the kickstand, Bluetooth speaker, carrying strap, all that kind of good stuff. We also then make our own proprietary devices. So this is our GridPad 10S. So it's our purpose-built tablet device, Windows tablet. Um, but you can see it's kind of a little beefier than, you know, the Surface Go Windows tablet that we, you know, put a tough case on. It's built to be really sturdy. I think it's, um, I can't remember the exact specs. I can, I have some uh, spec sheets I'll share at the end, but it's something like three meter drop test. Um, it's waterproof up to three feet if you have the um, plugs in the back um, plugged in. Um, it's got built in switch ports, two USB ports, headphone ports, um, the built in out facing speakers that you can see in the middle picture here surrounding the outward facing partner communication screen. So as someone's typing, people can see what they're typing. If you want, you also can turn that off. It's got its little kickstand. It's got the optional hard handle. You can add a strap on it and all that good kind of stuff too. Um, and then we've got our grid pad 12 and 15. And this is where, um, we start being able to use um, eye gaze access for our devices. So the GridPad 10S, sorry, I probably should hop back. Um, I mentioned the switch ports, but it's switch and touch access and voice access um, if you need those kinds of access methods. And then the 12 and the 15, you can start to put eye gaze cameras on. Um, you'll notice that 
the eye gaze camera down here at the bottom that you can see on both of these. Um, it kind of looks a little bit separate from the device. And that was kind of on purpose because we wanted to make it really easy to swap these out for people as they're trying different cameras, as you guys are evaluating things at clinics and things like that. So when you turn it around, it's just there's two screws and a USB plug that you undo and you can change out cameras to test out different ones or give people access to whichever camera they need. Um, the grid pad, the 12 and the 15 are compatible with all access methods. So they've got, of course, the built-in switch ports, eye gaze. You can add the EMG switches to them if you, if someone needs that voice access, um, you can get key guards made for them. If you need someone who's using touch access and needs a key guard as well, they've got the outfacing speakers you can see on the back mountable, um, and the, communi uh, sorry, the communication partner screen as well, that again, you can turn on or off as you need. And Amanda, um, I yeah. just wanna mention really quick that uh, we do have a grid pad 12 oh. in the OTAP library for loan. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, and then while the grid pads are compatible with, I always wanna say they're compatible with all IAs cameras, but there's usually like one random one that I haven't heard of or tested yet, but in general, Olea, um, the Toby cameras, all those kinds of things. But we did make our own Lumini camera because again, we we really try to be a fully um, functional, accessible technology company. Um, so we partnered with SmartEye to make this Lumini camera. And I wanted to highlight a couple of the super nerdy tech specs that might be too far, but they're worth noting because I've been doing eye gaze for a really long time. And this camera honestly continues to surprise me. It's not just because I work here. It's, it's really cool. So what they did was they expanded the tracking box, um, the head box. So where the user's head can be in space, both side to side and front and back, um, by a lot. So these numbers maybe don't mean too much to anyone right now, but it's significantly bigger. And what that means is that where when I started doing eye gaze, you know, not even super long ago, um, you really, really had to think about holding your head still so that the LED lights in the camera can reflect off the user's irises. That's how eye gaze works. So you had to kind of hold your head still and like it really, if you started moving around, it wasn't very functional or accurate. It's really frustrating for people. So this track box has made it so that as people start to move their heads around more or maybe have un involuntary movements, um, it can read them a lot more accurately because it also combines that with the software. Now it builds a little AI model of the user's head during calibration um, to then better predict where their eyes are looking. So I've seen kiddos with maybe like rets or things like that who have a lot of rocking motions and still be able to eye gaze really accurately and it's really exciting. Um, it's got a really quick gaze recovery, which is thinking about if you're looking you know, at your eye gaze and you're looking at your screen, but you look away, either someone's maybe not super into attending to their screen all the time, or someone who wants to have a conversation and look at the person they're communicating with rather than staring at their screen the whole time. Um, it used to be you kind of had to really strongly bring your gaze back to the screen to let the camera catch your eye again. And now it's almost seamless feeling. So as soon as your face kind of turns back towards the camera and the screen, it starts picking up an eye tracking again. So you can be communicating much more seamlessly. And then the sampling rate, again, I know these numbers don't necessarily mean that much, but it um, they have, it, it's how many pictures the camera is taking, uh, I think in milliseconds or something like that, but how fast it's taking. So again, thinking about someone who's got movement or looking away or maybe not you know, attending yet to their screen or things like that. It just means that as they're, they're getting better and better feedback, more accurate feedback as they start to attend to their screen and look more, just makes them more functional. That's really cool. Um, okay. So that was kind of the um, quick overview of our hardware, our software. Um, and now I'm going to jump into our software, into grid three and kind of give you a good kind of live version of it. Oh, and I'll check out this chat for a second too. Just make sure there's nothing I'm missing in here. Okay, cool. Um, let me switch screens here. Oops. Okay, and hopefully- We do also have grid for iPad. 
available through the library. Oh, yeah, awesome. Okay. Um, okay, hopefully now you can all see my lovely Grid Explorer screen. Um, so this, as I was saying, Grid Explorer, you can see I've got this training user open, Amanda training. Um, and I'll start today by showing you what I think is probably the most important feature of Grid. There's a lot, but this little drop down menu in the top corner up here, the little three line hamburger menu, um, it's everywhere in Grid. So any, any Grid site you're in, wherever you are, it's always there. You can hide it if you want, if you don't want little fingers getting into it and changing settings or jumping out into YouTube or whatever we're trying to prevent, but it's always available. So you can jump in here and it's got kind of a lot of things that we need. Um, as a note in Grid for iPad, it's still there. It's actually just on the other side and it's three dots instead of three lines, but same idea. It's all over Grid. You can hide it. You can block it as needed. Um, I want to show you first, and it might pop me out here, but I think our users, nope, yeah. every time I do that, it doesn't like when I, there we go. Um, okay, so I popped out into my user options from that drop down menu, and I wanted to pull this out, especially talking to this group of people, um, because it's really valuable to have this for like evaluations. If you're working in a clinic setting, um, you can make multiple users. You can make, I think, I don't know if I've ever heard a limit of how many users you can have on here. Um, so you could have someone, you know, your eye gaze user that you're testing or your switch user that you're testing or someone specific that you've been editing, um, you know, a certain person a person's profile and have it be separate so that you're not, you know, overlapping and undoing your work to do evaluate other people or test things out with other people as well. Um, so super handy. It's also handy if you've got um, a client who maybe is using different access methods, instead of having to go every time they want to change access method methods, go in and change all the different settings. You could just have, you know, an Amanda eye gaze user and Amanda switch user and just change users. All your settings stay the same, which is fantastic. Just makes our lives a little bit easier. Um, you also from here can sign into your remote editing. Um, piece, which is just, you just need a Smartbox account. You can use just whatever email you prefer. Um, and it'll jump you into a, a screen that looks exactly like this, except it will be profiles of users you can remote edit. So then you can just select one like I'm going to do now. I'm going to go back to my Amanda training user, um, put it up, and then you'll be able to, if I can put it back on my screen, uh, and then you'll be able to edit um, remotely. Um, the other thing that's really nice in the drop down menu again, there's a bunch of other good stuff that I'll jump into, but the settings menu is in here. And particularly for this training, um, this is a good thing to kind of be familiar with. There's a lot in here. So I've got my user um, profile here. You can change the name, my name or anything you want here, but the main thing is that you can choose where the user starts in Grid here. So I've got mine to start in Grid Explorer. But if I was like, okay, my user is going to be using mostly Supercore, I can choose that in here or whatever. So when they open Grid, it opens automatically into the Grid set they need. I've also got my access methods um, settings in here. So I can come in and look at my pointer settings. You can see I've got a bunch of different options for um, how, you know, how I click to activate. Do I hold a pointer to activate dwell? Do I use a switch? Do I need highlighting, audio highlighting, um, some different computer control options? Similar for eye gaze. I don't have an eye gaze camera on this computer, but you can choose whichever camera you need to, um, you're using. You can calibrate in here change some of those activation settings, how it's dwelling, how you know it holds, um, what kind of highlighting you want. Switch settings are also in here. Um, you can configure whichever switches you want. So sometimes I'll use my keyboard for switch settings for, for different trainings and things that I do. So you can configure them down here. Um, under activation, this is where you can start to choose about how it scans. If you want rows and cells, one cell at a time, all those different scan blocks. If you want it to automatically advance, tap a switch to advance, hold to advance, all those different options, how long you have to hold, how long it takes to advance, 
all that kind of good stuff. Um, also a bunch of highlighting options. Um, and then there's some options, a little more advanced options that I say, I still am learning about some of these more advanced options. You can have it reverse scan if you make a selection and all of these different kinds of things. You can really set someone up um, with a, a nice custom switch scan setting from in here. Um, we also, just so everyone knows, I'll show you at the end, but we have whole like three hour long webinars and workshops about different like switch settings specifically, IA settings specifically. This is kind of just a good overview. Uh, we've got touch settings in here. You can also decide how the touch works. You know, if you want to have a first item touch or if you've got someone who might have um, maybe drag their fingers across the screen a little bit, you can choose a, a last item touch or a touch and hold, different highlighting options. Um, and then voice activation settings as well. So if I choose to turn this on, it will give me a bunch more um, options about how to use and interact with my voice activation in here. Still in settings, back to this little column on the side, I've got the speech settings in here where I can choose the speaking voice I want. This is also where you can add, if, if you've got someone who is doing voice banking, you can upload their voice banked voice um, into here. You can configure the voice in here. So if you've got a voice that's pretty good, but you want it to be a little slower or, or pitch, change the pitch or anything like that, um, you can change that from in here. You can also change the audio feedback voice from in here. So if you've got someone um, who has low vision or just needs that audio feedback to read a cell before they select it, you can have it read the, in a voice in their ear, um, maybe in like a little earbud, or I've had people use little pillow speakers or something so they can hear a voice reading the options to them. And then it can, when they select it, it can speak um, out loud in their chosen voice. Um, you can have the options to speak as you type with sentences, words, characters, so like letters, each letter that you type, you can change pronunciations. And you can also do message banking from in here. Although um, we did build into several grid sets, message banking that users can do with their own access method, whatever access method they're using. We've got some writing stuff in here too. So um, this is where you can start to expand small words or expand abbreviations. Um, so you can type in, I think I put, yeah, but just LOL in so you can type in your abbreviation. You want someone to type and type in the expansion um, to help make them just faster, quicker communication, save them some key hits as they're going through um, and typing things out. And auto replace is a similar thing, but you can choose, um, if, once I open a grid set, I'll come back in here and show you, but it's the same kind of thing. You can have a little keyword or key phrase or key couple of letters that someone can type that will automatically, when they type it, expand into a bigger um, utterance. You can also adjust the symbols, um, symbol settings from here. Um, you can say if you want the symbols to um, be predicted in the chat box, to show in the chat box, you've got some adult symbol choices you can choose. You can change your symbol skin tone. Um, and you also can replace symbols with um, your own pictures if you want, whether those are pictures that you took and uploaded to the device or took with the device or found online and downloaded or something like that. Um, the accounts part, you can log in. It's smart to do it if, if everyone's open to it. Um, the email is where you can, if you log in with your email, then it will automatically populate to the grid sites if you want everyone to have access to their email through their grid set. Um, but if you sign into the Smartbox account um, and then the secure Dropbox account, um, not only will that save any changes that you start to make as you start to um, customize a, devi a device for someone um, to our cloud, but it's also where you can then start to add remote editors. So if I hop in here, um, all you have to do to add a remote editor once you're signed in and everything is add their email address in, hit add, and you're good to go. And you can also connect phones in here. So a lot of important stuff in settings. I know it's not like the most exciting, but it's where a lot of the functional kind of things happen where we can bring this all together for people a bit. Um, okay. Okay, questions so far? I know I've been kind of just throwing a lot of stuff at you. Doing okay. I did just let everyone know that the Smartbox account is free. Mm-hmm. 
So that's important. Thank you. And yes. A ton of the training also free. Yes, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I always forget to mention that. Yes, most of it's free. Um, question. Yeah. Um, so can you use the grid with do you have to purchase your device or can this um stand alone on another iPad? Um, yep. Yeah, great question. Yes, so you can put the software on um uh, any any Windows device or iPad. Um and yeah, yeah, that it works. I'll say one thing to consider if you're doing that. The iPad version is easy because you can just head into the App Store and purchase it. We can also sell different types of licenses if you've got like a team um who needs access, who can work under one account, you know, if like a clinical team or something like that. Um, with the grid three software, if you're using it with someone else's alternative access options outside of our devices, it can be worth just checking compatibility and I can help with that too. Um, but just kind of making sure we've got the settings that the user needs and everything for that. Amanda, do you recommend that we sign up for the smart box account free first before we add a user in, or does that make any difference? I think that's a great idea. Um, I don't. Yeah, I think that's it's kind of like in my head, why not? It's free. It's a place to store all of your um all of your settings, all of your grid sets, all of your remote editing options. Um it just yeah, it seems to make the most sense to me. Cool. Um okay. So, let's see. I'm going to do a quick overview of kind of the standard grid sets that we've got. Um so with grid, I'll say all of this is included again grids like a platform so we've got all these different grid set options in it and you never have to choose so it's not like you have to say i want grid with super core it all comes all together and then there's more that i'll show you as well um but we've got um these kind of ones that that are the grid sets that we put research into and started you know to kind of and come standard with our ideas of how you might start to work with someone. So we've got our core language grid sets up here, super core options, super core 50, 30, and learning. And the numbers just refer to approximately how many targets are on each screen. So if I open up super core 50, you can see it's got approximately 50 targets on the screen. Core language based, you've probably seen things that look pretty similar, which is great because we're all learning about core language. So the first three quarters of the screen about are pretty static throughout um, a lot of the grid pages. So we've got, you know, all the different, like I want to, it does do smart grammar. So we've got a row of next best word options up here. And then it also, you might've noticed I chose I, now it's changed to am. So you can start to use some of those smart grammar and work on grammar and literacy goals. Um, and then these last two columns over here, the blue ones, jump into more fringe vocab. So I might happen to daily, maybe eat and drink, and you can edit these to be what your user needs, but cookie. now I've got cookie. Um, you can jump into bigger pages if you want. I think, let's see, if I jump into play, let's see. I'll, I'll not find it right now, of course, but there's pages you can jump into where there's it, there's more fringe vocab on the page than just this, but we really try to keep a lot of the core language um, static throughout to work on those motor plan goals and everything like that. Um, it has a lot of other things built in that I won't go into too much just for the sake of time today, but it does have this magic wand that I just kind of want to give you a glimpse of um, where we've got some different grammatical endings that will come up, some punctuation you can start to work on. It's got some smart apps built in. Um, the cutest one I think is our text message quick chat option where if you connect a phone for someone, um, it's kind of a supported text messaging thing. So if I clear this message out up here, you can say, okay, let's pick one one message from each color. So I can say, hello, hello. how are hello. you? How Bye. And then I can pick my send to button choose from my contact list and send a text message um, with a pretty supportive kind of system. Um, our phones won't get the symbols as we text them, but if someone texts you back, it does try to predict with the symbols um, when you get back, when, it get, when you get a message back. Um, so super core 50, super core 30, I'll just show you quickly, just 
bigger targets. So if you've got someone who is using a different access method, just needs less targets on a screen, you've got these guys, same amount of vocab. It just might take some extra hits to get to because of the space. Um, then we have VocoChat, which is a more pragmatically based grid set. So thinking about communication pathways. Um, and so this I found has been great for kind of, for a lot of people, but specifically kiddos who are having trouble getting past maybe like one or two word utterances. If I start to make a choice, so I want, I want to play something building. So with three hits, I've got a pretty robust communication um, utterance already kind of going. And you can see those communication pathways that took me down each page was a kind of next best kind of word or phrase option to help people communicate and build a, a fuller utterance. Um, I've also seen it be really interestingly useful for people, oops, sorry, people with different, uh, with aphasias. Um, I think the communication pathways that kind of that prompting works really well for them too. Um, there's a lot in VocoChat. It looks kind of um, simple at front and that's kind of to make it not overwhelming, but I don't want to downplay how much is actually built into. I think there's still about like 2,500 pages or something in here. Ultimately, they all interconnect. So you can, it's not super easy to get lost in there or anything. But what, some of the ones I want to highlight are we've got this, let me hop back. So on my homepage, I've got this toolkit button up here. Um, I've got some options that we built in to start to talk about AAC and mental health. So talking, to, talking myself to myself options, you can edit these so that your user, um, they can be what they're talking to myself or self-soothing options might be. Some calm me down options, pain scales. Um, we've got some photo yeah, options. You photos. So you can load up pictures and talk about who's in the picture, where you were, all that kind of stuff built into this guy. We do also have these symbol talker grid sets in here. Um, they're what we call our legacy grid sets. They're category based. Um, we won't ever take them away, but I know a lot of people are moving away from these in their practice. Um, but you can see it's just kind of straight category based. It does start to have a little bit of core language in them. Um, and then the different options in there. There's symbol talker A through D you can see, and it's just, um, increasing the number of targets on the page for each one. So this is symbol talker D, that first one was A. So I've got a little more core language built up and then um, some more categories, more options, more targets on the page in here. Um, and then this bottom row is where we jump into more like QWERTY based keyboards um, for some of our more maybe literate or adult users sometimes depending. Um, Fast Talker is one that was built specifically um, for and with people with like MND, like more different motor neuron diseases. Um, so it's got a lot of the things built in that we anticipated someone maybe more adult or maybe, you know, different level, not learning language necessarily might be ready for. So we've got a keyboard with rate enhancing strategies, like the word and phrase prediction at the top. Um, we've got the saved messages page where I've got all these categories across the top that I can come and add and save phrases in. Um, it's worth noting that at the bottom here, we've got add a phrase and remove a phrase. So users with whatever access method they're using can edit these themselves. So I can just hit remove phrase and delete that one and it's gone. Same for adding a phrase. Um, we've got, this is one of the ones we've got message banking built in where the user with whichever access method they're using can message bank themselves. Um, we've got record new message down here. So you just hit record. We can record a test message, hit next. And then you hit start, stop recording, and you've got a um, message banked phrase then for yourself. Amanda, we have a, a question oh, yeah. in the chat here. Yeah. Uh, would, would you like to unmute yourself? Sure. And ask I your question. Yeah. I'm just wondering about the organization of the of the fast talker page sets. Mm -hmm. If it's kind of like Proloquo, maybe where there's a set of core that appears on every page, and then there's some folders that you can navigate to. Um, not so much. This one, they really just used um the QWERTY keyboard. I think I'm guessing you saw, oops, sorry, the top of this keyboard, some of the um word and phrase prediction. Um, they didn't build core language into this one really at all. It's just a prediction, um, prediction cells at the top where you can add in word or phrase prediction. We do have an adult core or like a fully like a more literate key QWERTY keyboard option with some core language options I'll show you though. 
Um, give me one second. I'll hop into that for you. <laughs> thank you so much for asking yeah. those questions. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. There are so many. There's so many I questions. Know. Right. And you're going to think of them, you know, afterwards. And, and that's why I have her email in the chat. Exactly. So you put in there. <laughs> exactly. Please email me. I know I try to cover everything, but I know there's so much. <laughs> um, this one, it's, it's got some web apps built into it. These I'll show you, you can build into any grid set you want, but just to give you an idea, some of the ones that we kind of preloaded in here, Netflix, YouTube, and what these are, uh, I think hopefully YouTube's a safe one to open right now, so sorry, <laughs> are basically grids that overlay onto the apps themselves. So you can see this is just, this is live, like regular YouTube. Um, this over here, the two columns on the side are, is the grid here. Um, so if I come in, like I can, I can just come and start to scroll through options, play options, whatever I need, just using whatever access method I need using these guys over here. It's got some different um, search options. I can program these to be whatever kind of search things, I, terms I want, um, some different trending options, all that kind of stuff in here. And so there's a bunch of different ones. Let me get out of here um, that we've built to be compatible with different apps across, across the web. The trending, that's fun. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. It can be really exciting. <laughs> there is a YouTube kids version as well that I'll show you. This is, that was the adult version. Um, in case you have someone who you want to be more careful with what they see, maybe, <laughs> um, phone, email, texting, all that stuff's built in here as well. Um, I'm going to kind of fly through some of this just again, for the sake of time, a little bit, we have some other web and computer access options too, um, that I'm happy to get into um, probably a little later. So fast talker, fast talker, large cell. Text talker is great for people who kind of just want that face-to-face -face communication piece. It, you can build in other options, but the idea is someone who might be using a tablet really just needs that keyboard with word and phrase prediction. Um, you can have some saved quick phrases here and they set this one up with the categories along the side here, thinking of someone who might be holding a smaller device using their thumbs to scroll through quick, phr quick phrases. Um, you can do message banking on here as well, all that kind of good stuff. And then AlphaCore is where we've got our, um, there's a bunch of different keyboard options, but this is um, a core language option for pretty keyboard users. Um, so you can see it's, they kind of try to um, take inspiration from a Fitzgerald keyboard with a color coding of some of these words. This I know looks really overwhelming at first um, and it can be, but I've seen people who are really into learning it, who take the time to kind of learn the pattern, learn the motor plan and can be really fast, effective communicators with it. So it can be right for the right person. It still has word and phrase prediction down here. And of course the QWERTY keyboard. And then it also, although smaller, has a bunch of different um, additional pages that you can build in. So like the topics page where you can start to have more words and phrase programmed in. Um, you can see I've got some of these key phrases for someone built in here, that kind of stuff. Um, okay. I think, let me show you a quick bit of editing. And then I'll show you a few more grid sets because I think editing is where we can make grid really functional for people, for different users. Um, Cause these are all maybe great starting points but they're never maybe the perfect option at first for someone, right? So I'm gonna pull us back into VocoChat just cause there's some space in here, but you can edit grid any grid set the same way. So whatever, and if it's the YouTube grid set or the Fast Talker one, it all edits the same way, which is pretty nice. Um, I'm just in Voco Chat. I'm hopping into this people and my family page because there's a bunch of like um, cells for me already built in here, which is nice because um, they want you to fill it with your family, of course. And again, I'm going to head into this lovely drop down menu, which again is everywhere in grid. Drop down menu, hit edit grid. And you can see, to me, it feels like it edits, it feels like a Word document. So it feels really intuitive, which is one of the reasons I like it so much. Um, I've got, you can see across the top here, a bunch of different tabs that I can make choices from and everything. But straightforward, there's a lot of things you can do. 
If you just want to add a cell, you're like, I just need to add mom in here into this people page. I can come and click on a cell. I've got this command column on the side. This one's already built for me. So I've got a write command built in. Click in my little box. I can select, I can type in mom. Um, and then I've got some picture options across the top. Or I could hop into find picture and either choose a different symbol set, use a picture file, take a picture with my device's camera, go online, search, find whatever picture I want for mom, um, hit finish editing, and my mom cells built. So this can be handy um, for starting to integrate grid or bringing some of your AAC users into different parts of your classroom. If someone, you know, you know, classroom helper, or even if you have, you know, a few extra minutes before you start like a pumpkin carving, carving um, section of class or something, you could come in, find a page um, in their, whatever grid set they're using, add in, you know, even five vocab words or something about carving a pumpkin, orange, knife, you know, carve, whatever. Um, now you've got someone who can participate in that um, section a little bit more easily. I'm going to hop back into the drop down menu and edit grid since I'm in here, just to show you that also this is a place where using these tabs at the top, I can hop into the style tab and I can start to change, I'll leave it this a little smaller so I can see it. Um, I can start to, if I select a cell, it gives me options for changing the background of the cell, um, the border of the cell. I can make a purple border or whatever. I can make it bigger, smaller, change my font, all that kind of stuff in here. I also can come into my grid tab at the top and change my background color if I need something with more contrast for someone. Um, and then just as a note, this is also where I can add some more options into my scanning options. So especially, I tend to use these most for my switch scanners as you're going through, but whatever kind of scanning someone's using, I can choose like scan blocks and start to set up scan blocks for someone so they don't have to scroll through, you know, I don't know, however many pages, I would have got 40 buttons on the page or something like that. Um, one by one, we can set up different sections for them. And I can also add in some audio highlighting options in here too. So if they're using, you know, a little speaker or something to read their options to them, I can add those in here. I'm going to finish editing and I'm not going to save those changes. Oh, wait, I'm not going to finish editing yet. I'm going to show you one other thing. Um, so let's hop back in. Okay, um, hop back into editing and show you that I can also from here um, hide or mask cells. So if you've got someone who's maybe just learning um, their system and there's too many buttons on a page, but you want to start practicing that motor plan, but kind of want to narrow choices at first for them or something like that, there's this option as I highlight a cell, come into this cell accessibility choice up here. And you can see I've got some different choices about how to make it work, but I can hide it completely if I want, make it not accessible, make it only accessible with pointer and touch if someone switched scanning or things like that. Um, okay. Let me hop back into Grid Explorer. And then I'm going to scroll to the next page of my Grid Explorer so you can have a lot. And you'll see that there's even more. There's tons of grid sets that come preloaded that you can add in. We've got in here some cause and effect grid sets where you can start to teach someone who's maybe using a new access method. Um, you know, if they're using eye gaze, you look at something and something happens. We've got choices, challenges, all these kinds of things. We've also got our accessible apps um, built in here. And we've got our environmental control stuff built in here. And those are kind of pulled out here because I think I was telling you how you can build in um, any kind of accessible apps into any of your grid sets to make it work for your user. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. But first, I'm going to show you, I think on this page, I believe I added in. Nope, let me add in. Um, so I've got a bunch of things I've chosen to add in. But how do you find some of these options? Because they don't all come necessarily already loaded into your grid explorer. So if I hop again into the drop down menu, there's this add grid sets button. And I can come in here. I've got my choices from all my preloaded grid sets. So if I hit symbol communication here, I can add a fresh set of, oh, it's going to be slow, Supercore, VocaChat. If I've edited something and just need to kind of start over for whatever reason, I need a fresh one. Those are all up here. 
Um, I also can come in here and create a new blank grid set of anything that I want. So if I just need a quick, I don't know, six button page to talk about, you know, plain bubbles or something, I can hop in there, make my own. But before you do that, it's usually worth checking out our online grids option. Um, and this is really cool. It's a great resource for you all. Um, it's a community of, it's users, it's us as clinicians, it's us as smart box user, uh, workers, like we all are contributing, we're making grid sets and then sharing them to this online grids community. You don't have to share anything, but you can share whatever you like if you think someone else might use it. Um, so I can come in here, for example, and search, I think, I know there's like a bunch of like Peppa Pig options or something instead of starting like, okay, I need to make a grid set for this kid. All they care about is Peppa Pig. Let's see if there's something I can start with um, before building my own completely. So I can at least get something going. Maybe I edited a bunch, but it can give me a starting place. Um, also in here, there's, um, I'm sorry, back to the, before the online grid sets page. Um, I want to point out that down here, there's a little Drop down menu where you can start to choose all the different languages we have grid sets available in. Um, so I'm going to really quickly add a Spanish version of Voco Chat. So I'm going to select Spanish. Now I've got all my grid sets available in Spanish. So I'm going to choose my symbol grid sets, hit my Voco Chat one, select it, hit next 100 times, and hit add. And now I've got my Spanish version of VocoChat, VocoChat 2 in here. And the reason I'm going to show you that is because I'll show you the other one, another great editing option. If I come into my English version of VocoChat, I'm going to come into my toolkit just to find a place to hit a button. And I'm going to make it so that if I've got an English user um, who also speaks Spanish at home or is, who is bilingual um, and wants to be able to switch between the English and Spanish version of VocoChat quickly, I can build a button so that they can do that themselves from within their grid set without going back out into Grid Explorer. So I jump into the drop down menu, hit edit grid. I'm going to delete this rest button because we don't need it here. So I've got my cell selected over here, hit create cell. And then there's a there's tons of different options you can see for different commands I can give it, but I'm going to find this change grid set option. Select it, hit OK. So I've got that built in. And now I come into this command column again, my drop down menu, and I can find my Voco Chat 2, which is my Spanish version. I can make that button pretty. I won't do that right now, but I could change the color and make it say something more appropriate. But now I'm in my English version of VocoChat. Hit change grid set. Oh, and I didn't pick this one before because it's a fresh grid set. You won't have to do this every time, but it'll pop me right into my Spanish version. So you can start to have someone who's bilingual switch back and forth. I know that was fast. So when if you ever have questions about that, it's just something I like people to know that they can do. Um, okay. Oh gosh, timing. Let's see how we're doing. Pretty good. Okay. Um, a couple other things I wanted to highlight as I was going through that beautiful matrix again, um, as options are some visual scene displays you can do. There's a template in online grids. It looks like this. Um, you can hop into like the bathroom one. All you do is change that grid background, like I kind of flew through before, but again, I can help with this. And then you can build in buttons over the options to use your visual scene di displays. Um, there's activity timers in there as well. Some templates, you can build your own, but there, here's like an idea of one of the templates that's in there. Again, in online grids. Um, and then there's book options too. So I pulled up going on a bear hunt. I just searched in online grids and someone made this template where someone can just, this is a huge button. We're going on a, and I can be, I can choose bear hunt or I can be kind of silly and say a monster hunt, a monster hunt and kind of read along and be involved with a story this way. Um, okay. I think then I want to show you one other thing. So this, as you can see, it has a lot of extra stuff I found in online grids that I've added that I've been working with. Um, I'm guessing many of you are familiar with our look to learn and look to read softwares, um, especially for iGaze users. They're um, they're pretty cool. So they just kind of help someone learn 
how to use IDS cause and effect there. Um, usually really quick access methods. You look at the screen and something happens. We also recently added our Look Lab um, software, which I'll show you a video about in a second. But um, those I have more information about um, and some webinars and some of the resources I'll share at the end of this, um, but know that they're there and they're softwares that come com with all of our IGAs devices um, that your users can use and um, start to use their IGAs more effectively with. We also recently came out with this Minds Eye option, um, which is an AI software that we created that uses AI and then the user's input to create art to better express more fully their feelings. So I'll see if I can show you really quickly. Let's see. So um, not we'll see sure. what I say. I can type in whatever kind of words I want here, hit imagine, and then there's options. It'll come up with different art options. Um, and then I can start to edit it using different style pictures of what I want. So let's see. Um, I can start to choose what type of art I want to create different details of lighting, color, what kind of camera I want, what kind of artists, what kind of style. Um, it's a really cool thing just to kind of show you quickly because it's pretty new for us too. Amanda, um, how, do yeah. they, how do they get to this? Oh, thank you. Like Mind's Eye, it... yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. Mind's Eye um, is, uh, you can just find it in online grids. So thank you for asking. Back in that add grid sets option, if I hop into Island Grids right now, since it's new, it usually shows up first. We'll see if it comes up, but it should populate in here or you can search for it in Online Grids and just download it. And there you go. Thank you. Um, okay. Let's see. I think I'm going to show you now. I'm going to switch to... And this guy, show you a quick, I'm gonna jump back to the look lab um, option that I was talking about. So we've got the look to learn, look to read, and then this is our new look lab thing. I'm gonna show you a quick video because it's easier than me like just clicking through options. It's got over 30 different activities to help people build specific eye gaze skills. Um, so if you have someone who wants to work on like dwelling or clicking or their accuracy skills, if they're trying to learn to drive their wheelchair with their eye gaze, this can be a great place for them to come practice before setting them free in their chair, which can be crazy <laughs> sometimes. Um, and it's more fun than just practicing by just typing things on a keyboard over and over or selecting between yes and no or some sometimes those kinds of things. So let me play this video. Let me know if the sound doesn't come through. I think I clicked share sound, so hopefully. Mm -hmm. you can hear it. I love the zombie one. <laughs> like there's a ton of options for all sorts of things. yes exactly like to really challenging ones to kind of just chill relaxing mindfulness ones um okay that's probably enough but that's the idea of that there's a lot of different choices for everyone um we have a question oh great um, yes do you have a tutorial or a template for how to add ir toys to a grid yes thank you that actually is a perfect next <laughs> segue. Some of the resources I wanted to make sure I highlighted for you all um, are, for example, our Smartbox Hub. So we've got our website where we can just find details on the devices and all that kind of stuff. 
our hub um, is a great place to come for questions like that. So we've got, there's different training videos on here. There's kind of step-by-step -step instructions. You can find product information if you need like a spec sheet or like a weight on a device or something, but you can come and say, okay, how do I connect a smartphone? How do I connect an IR toy or whatever we're doing? Um, search and it will bring you, hopefully I chose the right one. There we go. How do I connect my smartphone to grid three? And it'll give me, I got a little video here. It also gives me kind of step-by-step -step instructions based on different phones. We've got a similar one for toys, different environmental control options. There's a great one for TV remotes. Um, you don't have to program each button on a TV remote yourself. There's files you can upload and that's all in this beautiful hub resource for you. Um, you can send into the hub, but you don't have to. It's just a free resource for everyone. There also is, um, we've got our Smartbox Academy now too, um, which is a lot of free A, um, sorry, free CEOs, their acronym. Um, there are some longer, more intense ones that have some fees associated with them, but there's a lot that are free in here. You can kind of go down different pathways. If you're just starting out with AAC, there's some really great pathways that can take you down. Or if you're like, okay, I've got grid three, but now I'm a little lost with grid for iPad and some of the differences. There's a grid for iPad specific one that you can sign into as a clinician to be, um, it's still free to sign in and everything, of course, um, but to get access to that. And then we also have our YouTube channel, um, which has a lot of great resources too. So it's got some like user videos and things like that, some device highlights, but then if you go down to the bottom, it's got some of our webinars. These are all just on YouTube. So getting started with grid three tutorials, some more in-depth editing options, environmental control stuff is on here. Um, I've watched that one a bunch of times. I think that switch access one is in here. Um, so a bunch of different resources you can check out here and kind of scroll through at your own um, leisure as well. Um, okay, I think then you know, we're running close on time. I've got a quick, quick case study, but jump in with questions. I'm just going to reshare my screen here if you have them. So that'll do it for me. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Hopefully you can see my little slide deck again. Um, You've got that notes. Uh, oh gosh, okay. <laughs> just really doesn't want to share the way I want it to today. <laughs> there we, we go. Said the tech part. I guess we I need know. to say it earlier. <laughs> it's just me, you know. <laughs> um, okay, hopefully now you can see my regular PowerPoint. <laughs> um, so the quick case study I pulled together wasn't quick. This has been a long work in progress that I honestly am very proud of. Um, but it was M and she's a 19, now 19 year old female. Um, I started working with her about two years ago, pretty much when I started this job, she had a TBI at 14, limited mobility in upper lower extremities, really complicated vision status. She doesn't seem to have full control over her clo opening and closing her eyes. It's unclear on what she can see. Um, they're still working on trying to figure that out. She also had really minimal services. She was living with family until two years ago and then got moved to a care home. So it was kind of starting from, um, uh, just kind of starting everything all at once. So it was a lot for her. Um, and then they've been really unable to kind of get a good read on her cognitive status, like what she can hear, what she can understand because her communication is really complicated. Um, oops. There we go. Um, so she, when I met her, her communication was very unreliable, yes or no, with foot movement, um, kind of reading facial expressions, which I was unable to see after, you know, kind of trying to work with her caregivers to understand what they were seeing and reading. Um, they were trying really hard. Um, it was, there just wasn't a ton to get to understand. And then a lot of anticipation of her wants and needs. Um, her family was really insistent that she loved her essential oil um, work that they were doing. They'd come in and have all these different essential oils, which is not bad itself. It just ties into part of what we figured out as we worked on communicating with her. So where did we start with M? Um, first, we tried, of course, for a reliable yes or no with any part of her body, any movement. I tried the foot movement. 
it it was we we struggled. I was working with her OT. Um, we had a PT come in and do some work. This is all um, home based or care home based stuff. We worked with our caregivers, of course, a ton trying to figure out how to understand her best, but we weren't really able to find something that was super reliable. Um, but we felt like she had a lot to say. So we started trying to search for a switch access point. I pulled in, um, you guys might all probably know the wonderful Michelle Bishop, who's a switch whiz, <laughs> IT whiz. Um, and so we have had her come and try to help us out, trying to find something that we could start to get a, a hold on for communication for him. Um, and we found what seemed like a pretty good, um, head kind of tilts. It was kind of like a turn tilt. She's in bed most of the time. She's not really comfortable in her wheelchair. They're working on that right now too. Um, but as she was in bed, she kind of could do this given time, given a moment for processing. So we decided to go with that. And so we started working, we discovered she seemed to really enjoy this foot massager that we found. So we set it up with a switch, a jelly bean switch on a mount um, with a head switch or head mounts. So she could just lean in bed and turn it on and off herself. And that was awesome. Cause you could see that was something that I could see her doing um, and purposely and reliably. And it was really exciting. So we're like, okay, where do we go from here? So then we started trialing um, stop and go with a grid set. So I made a two button grid set that's just had stop and go with an audio scanning setup. So it read stop and go as it scanned audio auto scanned through the options for her, the two options we had in a deeper male voice. And then her voice her output was a, um, a woman's voice we chose for her. And so when she chose start or stop, we would turn on the foot massager or turn it off again. And so we started to work on that skill with her. Um, and then honestly, she kind of took off. It was so amazing to see. It still is. We're not done with her yet, but we are still working on this and it's really exciting. So we started then we we're like, okay, let's, let's build it up. Like foot massage is awesome, but what else? She's obviously got more to say. So then we created a simple choice board and grid with audio cues. We use single stitch scanning um, with, with um, auto scanning. And we gave her four choices, a foot massager to be on and off um, lotion music and I want to be alone. Um, and so we kind of let her choose. We cho we honored each choice that she made as we went through. Um, and it seemed to start to get really reliable and good. Um, now, since then, so in the past, oh gosh, I feel like it's in the past like eight months, we've just been adding more and building and practicing more. We've got a really dedicated SLP. I'm still there to help with programming because it's still complicated and kind of editing everything for her and building her grid set. But it's amazing to see what she's getting into. And I think, yeah, perfect. I've got my, her grid set. She said I could share um, with you all in this training. So hopefully, Amanda, are you going yeah. to be able to put these slides in the folder for them? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, oh, gosh, I know I'm up on time, but I'll show you really quickly her beautiful grid set. We've made her. Where did I put it? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I thought I had it. Well, maybe I lost it. Oh no, there it is. Okay. Boca chat MD. Um, so this is, we started with Boca chat because that's what our goal for her is, is to have a full robust communication system. You can see we've edited it a bit. We've hidden a bunch of stuff. How we usually start our sessions is we'll navigate her into um, her, my phrases page. So we can start to talk about some of the things that she's used to. This is moved from a grid set we built her previously, but each one of these, it'll scan through these options for her and it'll choose, you know, eyes. like I talked about, she's got some complicated things with her eyes. So we've got some options to, if she wants her eyes closed, open, if they're hurting, if they're feeling dry, they can moisturize them for her. We've got the I want I option want. with some of her favorite things that she wants. And she's, she's telling her caregivers what she wants. I think the, I want. I have where she put this. I think therapies, therapies is where the caregivers worked their wonderful team to figure out that she doesn't always like the essential oils that we were um, really insisting on in the beginning. And so she's now able to say if she likes the ones she's being given, or maybe if they hurt because they're really strong smelling or just don't feel great, or maybe she doesn't love the smell of them, which she has been communicating and sharing with her family and caregivers. It's been really special. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, that's really wonderful. 
So yeah, it's really exciting. <laughs> I know we're like up against the clock and there is so much information, but yeah. does anyone have any questions really quick? Um, they really burning things that they need to ask. 